All right, guys, so this is part two on how to mine Ethereum in AWS. If you have done a Google search on this kind of thing before, you might have come across my video, which is part one on how to mine Ethereum in AWS on YouTube. If you haven't seen that video, I suggest that you watch it. The link will be in the description for this video, if I remember to put it there. If I don't, please remind me, and I definitely will. But if you Google search for the same thing, what you'll find is this article by this person um, that did a great job uh, describing the situation and how it's basically a losing game in terms of profitability, profitability but he has some good CloudFormation uh, script, a good CloudFormation script that sort of details how this is done. So I won't go through this article right now except to say the TLDR is um, basically don't do it. It's not worth it. Um, but it's interesting to see how it works and that's what I'm going to step through for you today in case you do think it is worth it to you. So. Um, also make sure that you're not violating the terms of service. Make sure you uh, review that carefully to understand that before you begin. But let's go ahead and take a look at the CloudFormation that he has. Uh, the same author has a GitHub repo and he has created here. Uh, the first thing we have to do is increase our default lima limits for some resources. Uh, in, in particular here, EC2. We want G uh, and VT spot instance uh, increases. Uh, we want to we want to use a g4dn.extra large, and these are the commands that you run to request that increase. So what we're going to do actually, I'll show you what that looks like once you run the command. You go to service quotas, and there are no current pending service quotas because mine has been fulfilled already. But if I look at the quota request history. Uh, we don't see it there either, but if I go to support, we should see it there as a resolved case. And it is. So AWS has, uh, has increased the service limit. They didn't assign it to anyone, um, but they resolved the case, and that's why I now um, have the higher limits there. So that's what that looks like. Um, and if we go to ec2instances.info, which is a great way to compare prices on specific instance types, and we put in a g4dn.extra large, we can see it's 16 gigs of RAM, four virtual cores, 125 gig NVMe SSD, and we're looking at about $115 a month for Linux spot, because we're using Linux. We're using the Ubuntu Deep Learning AMI provided by Amazon which is going to have all the NVIDIA drivers pre-installed and the various utilities that come with it. You can do all sorts of Jupyter Notebook, uh, deep learning, machine learning uh, things with these AMIs, but we're of course just using ETHBiner. So if we go to a cloud shell, you can see that I'm in the Ohio region up here. Maybe you can't see that, that's probably blurred out, but um, let's go ahead and take a look at the template. So if we vim this template, uh, we're going to take a look at it. So at the top here, you can see what, what the instance types are that he has defined. And I haven't made any changes. I've only made a couple minor changes to the script that I'll talk about here in a minute. But he has identified that g4dn.extra-large is the best bang for the buck. It's a Tesla T4. And in terms of cost and performance, it's the best. You could try these other ones. The ones that he commented out are not worth it. It's too slow for the price. And it defaults to this g4dn.extra-large that we were looking at just a moment ago in ec2instances.info. We have an auto-scaling group that's going to default to 10 instances. And we have a wallet address which you'll want to change most likely. The default wallet address is, is the uh, author's uh, wallet address and I changed this to mine. So then we have mappings of this deep learning AMI that I spoke about earlier, Ubuntu 18.04 version 36. Each region has its own AMI. So depending on what region you're using is which AMI you'll get. There's also a spot price map, but we're not using that as you can see it's commented out. So one of the resources that's created is an instance role, which is STS assume role for SSM stuff related to the instance. And you'll see how that comes into play here after we launch it. There's an instance profile uh, that references the role and there's a launch template. And then you can see again up here, the market type is spot 
and this is one time spot instance type and we're not using max price uh, from that find and map above. The main part here is the user data, which is base64 encoded. Of course, it's decoded right now, but it's encoded on the CloudFormation layer. So what this is doing is, is setting up a little script that goes to temp. It w gets the gz file of, of ethminer, uh, unzips it, and you cd to the bin directory, and then we create what's called a here document um, containing this information. So. There were four servers here, EU1 and Asia1 were also listed, but I got rid of them. We're just gonna use US1 and US2. And basically while true, we're going to randomize the server that we feed into the ethminer command. And we're gonna log in temp ethminer.log. We're going to make it executable, this shell script, and then no hub it and, and run it. So this minor ASG defines the auto scaling group uh, again, we have a uh, minimum of zero instances, a maximum of 10. We have a notification topic because we want to be notified when new instances launch and when they terminate or if there are errors. The topic is created, however, subscribers are not. So you need to subscribe to the topic or else you won't get any of these notifications. Go down a little farther and we can see we have the nice ethermine.org uh, dashboard URL which pre-populates with your ETH wallet address. So let's go ahead and get out of this file and deploy it. This is that command, AWS CloudFormation deploy template file, the name of the template file, stack name, I'm just calling it ETH, and capabilities named IAM. Um, if you don't supply that, this command won't work. So we'll go ahead and run that. And actually we need to stack down uh, because I, I uh, had it running from a previous deployment. So we're gonna go ahead and go to CloudFormation and actually, we won't, won't deploy it since uh, it's already deployed. Let's just go ahead and take a look at the stack. So we go to the stack, look at the events. You can see it took, um, it started at 13.38, ended at 13.41, so it took about uh, three minutes there. And the resources, we'll step through those. Uh, starting from the bottom, we've got this notification topic. If we click on that, you can see this is the topic, however, there's no subscribers, so you're going to want to subscribe to this if you want to, if you want your notifications on the auto scaling group. This is the minor auto scaling group. Click on that. You can see desired capacity is 10, minimum is zero. We want to have 10 running at all times, basically. If we monitor this, uh, we don't have the uh, metrics collection, but so we can go ahead and enable that but we probably will not have any data yet and any instances, maybe one or two. But if we go to activity, we should see it attempting to launch instances and fail. And that's because there's no spot capacity that matches our request for this uh, particular EC2 won't uh, be available in the Ohio region um, as of right now. So not surprised by that. Very popular. People want that spot discount. You can have a discount of up to 90% uh, versus on demand. So of course people want to use spot. If you if you know you have, and reserved is even better, if you know you have a workload that's going to last for one year, two years, three years, you want reserved. Um, but if you want spot, you just want your thing to run whenever it can at the cheapest price possible, spot is the way to go. But it's failing all over the place because there are a lot of people doing it. So here's a particular error. They don't have sufficient G4DN.extra-large in US East 2A. So they're saying choose a different AZ. Uh, but that's what that looks like. And then the template, if we go to that and scroll down, actually if we go to advanced details, um, there's no specific spot purchasing uh, options set, but we could set those. And then we see that user data, which is base64 decoded under the screen, but it's encoded going to CloudFormation. So that's what that looks like. Let's go to EC2 and see if we have our machine, if we maybe have one, or if it got evicted. So we do have one machine running in US East 2B. So let's go ahead and I think I still have my shell open. Yeah, my session, my systems manager, session manager open to this machine. Um, so you can see here, um, this is that machine. If we do an HTOP, uh, we might see some, yeah, we see our ETH miner processes. So let's actually do a PS aux pipe to grab ETH miner, and we can see that it's running. 
And if we cd to temp and we look at that log, uh, you can see that we're uh, at us2.ethermine.org. And if we run NVIDIA to dash SME, SMI, we have that uh, CUDA version 11, drivers 450, Tesla T4, 70 watts. We're currently using four gigs with ETHminer. We've only got one ETHminer process running. I'm not sure why there aren't more, but uh, we've just got the one because we could, we could have, this is a 16 gig card, so we might as well have four of them running, uh, but we don't. So, at any event, let's uh, let's actually see if we can run another one. Actually, no, never, never mind. We won't do that right now. But um, it is running, and we do have. So, if we go back to the cloud formation, we've got that dashboard URL in the outputs where we could try to see if we have any results. So, we're going to copy this and then take a look. Okay, so here we are at the dashboard. And we have a whopping three cents uh, since we started running, and we we're getting 7.2 mega hash, which is not good at all. Um, so that's quite low. Uh, apparently, we have an inactive worker. Uh, sorry, we've got more like 60 cents here. Um, I think that might be since we started, but I'm not sure. But um, this is, if you're familiar with uh, Ether. Ethereum mining, this is a terrible hash rate, um, but this is just more of a proof of concept than anything. So if we click on that default worker, maybe we'll get a little more information. But this is what the dashboard looks like. So going back, um, this is a really nice uh, GitHub repo showing how you can do this kind of thing in AWS with a CloudFormation stack. It requires some adjustment, you're going to want to choose the uh, the Ethermine servers that you wish to use based on where you're located, probably the instance type, possibly the spot uh, settings within the CloudFormation file, and of course your uh, Ethereum wallet address. So hope you enjoyed this, and if you have any questions, please leave a comment below. And if you haven't watched version one of this uh, video or part one of this video, please do so as well. And thanks for watching.